Series. This one is entitled Protecting Your Home. So, without any further ado, now you all should have a, um, some, uh, a leaflet at your at your at the tables. And um, without any further ado, welcome. And I'll turn the floor to Arthur. Thank you, Arthur, for joining us once again. Thank you very much, Joyce. I really appreciate it. It's really kind of Joyce to, to offer us this space. I know. Um, my name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an elder lawyer. I work at uh, Myrick O'Connell, which is a fairly large firm uh, in Worcester. There are about 66 of us. I'm the person who does all the elder law. Uh, and I really want to welcome everybody who is here. Uh, this, <laughs> this is a popular topic. Uh, I found myself, as a matter of fact, I found myself today, we were talking to clients kind of throughout the day because I try to see clients the same day that I come down here. And I would say we met with clients all day and about half of the time we were talking about people's homes. That is actually different from most places uh, in that, well, for a lot of folks, we're talking about home like while you're alive. There's no place like Martha's Vineyard in terms of people trying to figure out how to deal with their home after they die also. Because, of course, nobody wants you to sell your home. <laughs> your kids, your grandkids, which makes it unique. I think that's why I wanted to mention that because I think that this summer we actually decided as a result to do a seminar. I think. We're going to be doing them here uh, March, April, May, and then we're going to be going to Oak Bluffs June, July, August, and then coming back here September, October, November. But I think in June at one of the Oak Bluffs ones, we're going to do one specifically talking about dealing with your home after you die. That is trying to figure it out among the kids and the grandchildren and the one who's still on the island and the two who are not. And, you, and, and so are we selling it to one? Does everybody get to visit? If so, how do you figure that out? what happens with the grandchildren, all that stuff. Not that there's one answer to that, but I think that there may be some just some kind of standard ways of looking at a lot of those problems, which could be helpful. So anyway, thank you very much. But today we're talking about the home and protecting it uh, while you are alive. And we're going to talk about our wonderful couple that many of you have met in previous seminars, our friends Frank and Mary, uh, who in today's seminar, their asset situation has changed a little bit because they live on Martha's Vineyard, so that their house is worth more than it would be in another place. So their house, which is not anything big and huge, you know, is worth $400,000 here. Uh, they have CDs, which they own jointly, worth about $300,000. So they have assets of about $700,000. Frank is on Social Security. He's getting about $2,000 a month. Mary is on Social Security. She's getting $1,000 a month. Can you see okay over here? This is all right. Um, and they're trying to figure it out. They're 79 years old. Next slide. And, and their goal, their goal, well, this is their oh, I'm sorry, oh, Brenda's so good. By the way, you all met Brenda Costa, whom you've met in the past. Brenda's folks live up off the Vineyard Haven Road, off the Edgartown Vineyard Haven Road, which is why we started coming down here. She's the designated daughter. The, the, a lot of folks know um, Mr. Costa, he's the one that was always flying planes, and that continues to fly planes. So anyway, um, Frank and Mary have that annual income total of 36000 and this is about how they're spending it right now. They have real estate taxes. Oh, I should have asked. Please check your phones. Everybody's phone off. Everybody's DVD, all their things. Shut off your phones, if you could. Um, they've got real estate taxes of about $3,000 a year because they're on island, so they get the residential exemption. They've got utility costs of about $3,000. Their insurance, that is their, their, uh, their uh, home insurance, is about $2,000 a year. 
They get food expenses of about $15,000, and they've got $13,000 a year left for fun if they're going to be breaking even every year and, not, and, not, trying to, and try, not trying to spend down their savings. So that's kind of where they are, and they're living a happy life because they have no mortgage, and they're just kind of rolling along, and the, you know, the kids come to visit every once in a while. They get three kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary, Jr., and they, and they, you know, I mentioned that. Did you ever notice that there's never a Mary Junior, right? There's never a woman who was a junior. It's only the men. So I always wanted them. So anyway, and their goals are very simple. They want to live in the house until they die. They want to be buried in the backyard. And they want to leave the house to their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Junior, right? They thought when they were younger that they were going to spend all their time traveling and do this and that and blah, blah, blah. But they don't want to do that now, right? They're 79. They like their house. They like the fact they know everybody, and they kind of go to the coffee shop. Well, sometimes they don't like everybody at the coffee shop, but they know most of the people there, and they just kind of want to stay. So, next slide. So, then <clears throat> Frank gets sick, uh, and now he's get, he got sick. So he had a fall, and he fell and broke his hip, and went to the hospital, and they discharged him, and he went through rehab. And, you know, he's not, like, great right now, um, so he's going to need somebody to be watching him. So he's, he's sick, and, but there are two possibilities. Of course, Frank's first goal, both Frank and Mary's, is he wants to stay home, and she wants him back home. Um, but the, there is a possibility if he needs too much care and just can't manage it at home, he's going to gonna, gonna have to go to a nursing home. So we're going to talk about those two. What if Frank wants to stay home? Uh, and, you know, they don't have a lot of savings, so they know that if Frank's going to be staying home, they're going to be needing more home care, which means they're going to need either to be spending quite a bit more money or they need to qualify for something. Well, if, if, Frank, um, can if Frank would otherwise qualify for nursing home care, um, if it weren't for the fact that he had Mary at home and he had extra home care and he had nurses and all of this jazz, then... Uh, he can actually uh, qualify for something which is a really important benefit. I've talked about it a little bit in past seminars, uh, called the Frail Elder Waiver. That Frail Elder Waiver is, is administered by um, uh, Elder Services of uh, the Cape and the Islands. Um, and, and he could qualify for that, and then Elder Services can develop a care plan to keep Frank at home. And that care plan could c include home care hours of up to 40 hours a week, as well as the nursing hours, and as well as a whole bunch of other stuff. Now, for him to qualify for that, the most important thing to, to, to know, he could do that right away. And once he's done that, Mass Health, which is the Mass Massachusetts name for the Medicaid program, would pay for all those bills. Now, for him to qualify, he has to have less than $2,000 in countable assets. And he has to have income of, of just a little bit less than $2,100 a month. But he does, in our example. He meets both of those um, criteria. Um, except that he has too much, as far, he meets the criteria as far as income, but he, he doesn't meet the one as far as assets. But all he has to do in that case is simply transfer everything to Mary. Oh, he can't do that. There's a five-year look-back period. But actually, there isn't in this case. He could, there's no look-back period. He could simply transfer everything to Mary. Because Mary, as the spouse at home, can have infinite assets. She could have a million dollars in assets. Uh, and he can still qualify for the Frail Elder Waiver and get all of these benefits from uh, Mass Health. But well, th then the, the issue of, is, of course, what happens if Mary dies? Because, of course, Mary's very concerned about this. You know, Frank's on the Frail Elder Waiver, but if I die, and, and the way we've got our assets set up, I'm leaving everything to Frank, which means all of a sudden he's a rich guy and, and isn't going to qualify, which is true. But she can easily do change that by simply changing her will. She can change her will. The day that she gets all these assets, she can change her will to say, instead of everything going to Frank when I die, I want everything to go in trust for the benefit of Frank. And I'm going to leave one of my children, Peter, Paul, or Mary Jr., or some combination of them, as the trustees. And I'm going to give them discretion to use some or all of the money to help Frank and provide for any of his care or to give some of the money back to Frank if he wants some of the money. But the point is, if she does that and then dies the next day, all the assets are immediately safe, and Frank can continue to qualify for the Frail Elder Waiver and stay at home. Oh, my God, but isn't there a five-year look-back period? No, there isn't. As a matter of fact, that's the other exception to the five-year look-back period rule. You can always transfer things to your spouse, and you can always transfer things if you're one spouse you, by, by, by will, you can put things in trust for the benefit of your spouse, and if you die, that takes effect immediately, okay? So, 
And, 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 they, and by the way, if, if Frank is on this, this um, uh, frail elder waiver, then he can actually qualify for something called the personal care attendant program and also for the caregiver homes program. Um, we're actually going to do a presentation just about those alternative programs that are available. But this, the quick summary of that is, if Mary Jr. moves into the house, MassHealth will pay her to move into the house and to provide some of this ongoing care for Frank. Uh, in one case, she gets paid a little bit more, but it's taxable. In the other case, caregiver home, she gets paid a little bit less, but it's non-taxable. Um, so anyway, so, there, so in other words, there are a number of programs, folks aren't aware of them, that are designed to try to help Frank and Mary keep Frank in the house, right? And even after Mary dies, to keep Frank in the house. And of course, probably that, remember, that was their goal. Stay in the home until they die and be buried in the backyard, and this is what we're trying to achieve. Next slide. Well, and, and by the way, what about the frail elder? What does that all mean? To qualify for nursing home care, and therefore to, uh, I, I shouldn't say that, to qualify for mass health to pay for your nursing home care if you're there, and therefore to qualify for the frail elder waiver, because remember, you don't qualify for the waiver unless you would otherwise be eligible for nursing home care. You need to, you need to show, you need to need help regularly with two out of the five ADLs or activities of daily living. And I know, once again, some of you have seen this in, in the past, but I'm just trying to combine this with a lot of other stuff, so I want to review these. Two of the five, bathing, dressing, eating, toileting, transferring. What is transferring? It is standing up, getting across the room, sitting down. If you can get across the room with the walker, but you can't get out of your chair, you, don't, you, know, you need help transferring. If you can't do two of those without another person's assistance, or if you can do them all, but you need someone to watch because you may just kind of drift off and decide you want to go swimming today, right? Um, then, then you're going to qualify for nursing home care and also qualify for the frail elder waiver. Next slide. And, that, and, the, and the person that decides that question of whether you qualify is the person from the elder services of the Cape and Islands. Next slide. 